Cody, how do I think through client rebuttals? How do I get to where I'm able to overcome client rebuttals? How do I get to where when someone gives me an objection, right? I know what to say. And if you want to think through an objection and you want to pause for a second and just say, okay, I want to ask you, what do you think an objection is? Okay, I want you to stop and think about your own personal definition for an objection because most of us have different answers for what an objection is. Okay, and I think, I really believe that objection is simply the client trying to take control of the conversation. Whether it's over the phone, whether it's in person, doesn't matter. I truly believe that majority of objections are totally made up, at least the first one, and that when they say they're not interested, they responded. They wouldn't respond if they were not interested, right? Or, hey, I'm broke. They know everything comes with a cost. They're paying for stuff now, so they're not totally broke, because if you're totally broke, you really can't pay for anything, true? Okay, or, you know, I didn't do that. Well, when you know they did that and they know they did that, then they're just lying. It's just, it's just a, it's just a difference of opinion, a difference of thought, right? Well, if they say, well, I already have it, you know, they wouldn't have responded if they didn't want, if they didn't have questions or didn't have a little bit of interest, right? They, if they say, you know what, my, my, my spouse takes care of that, you know, that doesn't mean that you guys can't get together with your spouse. Or they say, if they say, hey, I'm busy, they wouldn't have answered the phone if they were busy. When I'm busy, I don't answer the phone, bro, right? When, when, and, and, and think about that for a quick second. Stop and think. When you get a call and it, it's buzzing your phone right now, let's, let's, let's picture this. When this happens, if you're busy, like legit busy, do you answer the call? No, I don't either, right? So we're past that. You don't answer the phone. I don't answer the phone either if I'm busy. Now, because if you also think about it, think about it for a quick second. If their, if their daughter called, would they have answered the phone if they were really busy? Maybe or maybe not, but they would have answered. If, let's just say they answered the phone. Would they have told the daughter, hey, hey I'm busy, I don't have time to talk? No, because they answered the phone so they would talk to their daughter. They may rush the daughter to like, hey, give me some, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I, am, I am about to go into a meeting, but I'd love to hear what you have to say, right? But they would still keep talking to the daughter. When people are really busy, they don't answer the phone. Or if their kid called, they'd talk to them. So with, with a lot of agents, and I, I heard it yesterday, I heard it today, I heard it this morning. With a lot of agents, those objections are paralyzing us from getting what we want. And I really believe that an objection is simply the client trying to take control of the call or the appointment or whatever. And as an agent, as a salesperson, as an entrepreneur, you typically should not listen to objections. Right? That's why a lot of agents, and a lot of you, you're like, dude, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. That's why step number one is always to be agreeable when you respond. Because most people aren't agreeable. And it gives you a chance to think about what you're going to say before you say it. Right? So when they're like, hey, I'm not interested. I understand. And then it freaks them out. It's like, dude, no, most people don't say that. Right? Most people say, most people are trained in our business to say, when, they say, when the client says, I'm not interested, you should say, well, what do you mean you're not interested? You don't know anything yet. It's combative. It's disagreeable. It's stupid. And I, I had people used to try to train me to sell that, say that too. It's, it's dumb. Quit saying it because it doesn't make sense. And the client is going to get defensive, right? They're, they're already trying to get defensive and put their guard up when they're giving you an objection to begin with, even if it's fake. So the, the point of being agreeable is, is to put it down. I love when, when someone's, when I'm saying something and someone doesn't agree with me and, and I'm saying, hey, the sky is, you know, the grass is, oh, that grass is, you know, burnt, it's brown right now. And they're like, no, Cody, actually, I think, I think it's green. You know what? I think you're right. I think some of it is green, you know, right? It's just, it's how we respond, how we take things. You can do this in business. You can do it in life. You can do it in an appointment. You can do it on a call. Doesn't matter, right? When, 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 uh, when, when my when my wife always says, "Hey, babe, what do you want? Do you want to go for dinner?" And 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 uh, I say, I, you know, I don't know. Well, or vice versa. When I ask her and she says, "I don't know where I want to go to dinner." Well, what I need to say next is perfect. If you had to choose, where would you say, right? But most of us don't stop, which is why we talked about this. Show, that's why we're doing this on the show today. Because most people need to stop and be agreeable, be positive, and get answers to our questions. So I want you to think about. When you get an objection from now on, what I want to challenge you to do is stop for a couple seconds and say, okay, what just happened? If you couldn't overcome it, then think, like, don't just keep doing that. Like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expect a different result. When you keep getting objections and you don't eventually stop and think about what the heck just happened and how, how do I overcome it and how do I have better results the next time I get it? Because if you keep getting it every day and you don't get better and actually role play and train and get better at overcoming it, then it's dumb. Right? We're not focused on improving at that point. We're okay with someone giving us the objection and then we're going to blame the lead.
or the client or the customer instead of realizing that, hey, maybe we just aren't good enough yet. Maybe when we got that objection, we weren't prepared. Maybe when we got that objection or whatever that client said, we weren't good enough to overcome it yet. But instead of thinking of it that way, I want you to also think next time I'll be ready. Next time someone says that, I did a poor job that time. Okay, we'll put it behind us, right? You get one chance to make a good first impression. I'm gonna put it behind me. But the next time, I'm gonna realize that, hey, guess what? I got a chance to overcome that one. And the next time someone does that, if I'm prepared, if I role played it, if I'm trained, and if I know what to say and I'm quick on my feet, right? Then I've got a chance of overcoming what they said. But if we just keep assuming the same thing over and over again, we don't actually try to overcome it or get better at overcoming it, then we're just gonna keep getting objections for, for the whole three years that we're in insurance. And then we're gonna fail and be like 92% of other agents that fell because we didn't try to get better, or we didn't realize that, dude, when they said they were busy, they were freaking lying, right? Everyone is busy. I'm, sh I'm shooting this right now live with you, and guess what? I'm busy, my phone's blowing up, I'm getting text, emails, calls, everything else, but I promised I would do this, so whether I'm busy or not, I'm going to do it, right? The same thing can be said for you, you're busy. You don't have time to make dials, but you make dials because you know you need to make dials. They expressed interest in getting help from you because they know they need help. No one's, it's, it's not human nature to say, I need help, please help me. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, Keith. I need you to teach me, okay? It's not human nature. Human nature say, you know what? I told you I wanted help, but I changed my mind. I'm not interested, I'm busy, you know? So, so stop and think about what you're doing with an objection, with your rebuttals, and how you can handle those when clients give them to you. I want you to start thinking outside the box, right? I want you to start thinking about, am I agreeable? You, a lot of people are like naturally like to disagree with people. There's a guy that I used to play basketball with in college and he loved to disagree with everyone. And he was a great arguer. A dude should have been an attorney or something, you know, whatever. Shouldn't be in sales, but he was great at arguing with people. And at some point, you gotta just stop arguing with everything everybody says because even, even, even the craziest thing they say maybe has a slight hint of truth to it, right? So instead of saying, hey, you know what? You know what, the, 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 you know, the, the grass is brown. No, no, dude, it's green, man. I can see it, you know? You're right, I'm colorblind. Freak, it's green right? I don't care, okay? Because if it gets, if I move on and it gets me to the next point of where I want to go, then it doesn't matter. So I want you to start to think about what do those mean when you get them? Take a step back when it's over and say, okay, wh what happened? What'd they say? What did I do? How did I respond? And what could I have done to make sure that next time I'm freaking ready? Okay, so I want you to pause. I want you to think about objections. And I want you to start to think about the psychology of client objections. Now let me give you my three steps to overcoming objections really, really, really quick. Okay, three steps to overcoming objections. I got a couple more pages to get to. My three steps for overcoming objections when they're like, hey Cody, I'm, I'm not, because what happens is you, you're on this path, okay? You're at the start of a cell, you're at the finish of a cell. And when, when oh, you're going down and you're reading your script and they're like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm I didn't do that right? They're taking you off the path. They're trying to take control of the call, right? And, and if they say, well, I'm, I'm not, in, you know, I, I don't know that I, I, I don't know that I can qualify. My, I'm in bad health. I understand. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. This program is actually meant for people that are not in great health. Okay. So tell me, bam, and then ask a question and get right back on script on the path and keep going, right? All, all these objections that you guys think you're getting early in a call, early in a call, you know what those are? That it, it's, it's, it's simply, it's simply, right? It's simply human nature. It's simply human nature. People are supposed to give an objection early in a call and they do not mean the objection they're giving you. When they say they're not interested, they showed interest, they responded. When they say they don't have any money, homeless people have money, right? Because I give it to them sometimes, right? The, you say, well, I didn't do it, right? You know they did. I already have coverage, you know, fantastic, right? That's awesome. They believe in the product, they're more likely to talk to me about it. Okay, well, my, my, well, my, my daughter takes care of that. Excellent, you can get her involved. Yeah, or they're like, or, or, or you're halfway through, they're halfway through the cell. And they're like, well, I need to make sure that my, my daughter is actually the one that, 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 you know, helps me with all this. So, oh, excellent, no worries. I promise you, you'll get to talk to your daughter. Okay, and then boom. So, so tell me again, what, what was it? What would you, what, how, how'd you spell your last name again? Right, right back into the script. So here's my three steps. Agree, answer, and ask. Okay, agree, answer, and ask. Because when I walk in, and, and the, the, the psychology behind that is, think about this for a second. Okay, when I walk into Best Buy, 
and, and they're, they're, they say, oh, can I help you today? What do you say? No, I'm just looking, right? No, I'm just shopping. You going in to buy something, but it's human nature to say, I'm just looking, I'm just shopping. Okay, also, when I ask my wife, hey, babe, where do you want to go to dinner? Here's a great, good hypothetical piece. When I ask my wife, hey, babe, where do you want to go to dinner? What does she say? This, what I'm about to tell you, you will use, it's not going to be in the free ebook, by the way, but you will use it forever. I ask my wife, hey, babe, where do you want to go to dinner? What do you think she says? I know, I don't know, I'm not sure. It, well, okay, babe, if you had to choose, where would you say? I used this in an appointment in Joplin, Missouri years ago. And I said, sir, do you know where your life insurance policy is? He said, I, 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 like, like everyone, it's human nature to say no, and I don't know. So he says, I, I don't know, right? Some of you would have believed that he didn't actually know and would have moved past it and never got the policy. I said something that made zero sense. I tried it and it worked and I use it still today. And what I said was, sir, if you knew where it was, where would it be? And he said, well, if I knew where it was, it would be in the filing cabinet right over there. I'm like, this one? Okay, okay. I said, okay, it, top or bottom drawer? Well, probably the top. Can I open it? Yes. I opened the top of the filing drawer. Guess what was sitting on the top drawer? On the top, in the top drawer. His insurance policy. But eight seconds before, he said, I don't know. It's human nature. They do not believe it. That psychology is, the number one rule of sales is to always agree I'm training a state company. I'm consulting a state farm company up in New York and, and, and I'm talking to them about, they're telling me that they're getting pe people that say, well, I, I don't want to talk about life insurance. It gives me the heebie-jeebies, right? And I'm telling them, excellent. Tell the client, I, I agree. I'm with you. Talking about life insurance, give me the heebie-jeebies too. I hate talking about it. However, with everything going on in the world, if you'd be amazed how many people are trying to qualify for their, their life insurance right now. And I want to make sure we didn't leave you out. So tell me, who do you currently have your life insurance with outside of work? Right? It, that's, that's agreeing. It's not natural. Most insurance agents are trained that when, when someone says, I'm not interested, we're trained to say, well, what do you mean you're not interested? You don't have enough information to be interested yet. Right? It's disagreeable. It's combative. It's not agreeable. Okay, the number one rule of sales is to agree. That's the best way to, to the best way, right? If you, ever, if, if you think about this, the best way to de-escalate conflict in anything my wife and I are, will be fighting. And I'll say, you know what, babe, you're right. She'll be like, I wish you would stop agreeing with me, right? I'm like, well, I thought that's what you wanted, right? Be agreeable, okay? It de-escalates stuff and it, it allows you to move on, right? Answer the objection and then ask a question, right? So if, I, if I'm setting face-to-face -face appointments, a lot of people do that. I'm like, hey, I'm not interested, okay? I understand, okay? It's my job to simply get you the information since you requested it now, I'm going to be out in your area on Friday, so should I just drop it off in the morning or in the afternoon? Which is better for you, right? That's agree, answer, and ask. You should never respond to a fake objection or a real objection if you actually believe those exist without finishing with a question. Agree, answer, and ask. You have to finish with the question. Psychology is if I don't finish with a question, I just agree and I just answer, then they're going to restate their original objection or they're going to hang up. But if I finish with a question, I'm trying to reassume control of the call. I'm trying to get back on script and I'm trying to proceed down the finish line. Okay, so let me give you some examples. I've only got a couple more minutes. Let me give you a few. Again, we've got tons of videos. If, you, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you need to do that today. Stop what you're doing and do that. Okay, we've got 17,000 agents subscribed to our YouTube channel now. Uh, we put out video content every single day. We've got 2,500 videos on YouTube, right? It's the best free training platform for insurance agents in the world. Okay, we're gonna keep piling that with information. If you love everything we're talking about and, 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 and you wanna talk to me about training your sales team or, or getting you trained or helping you in any way, okay, with anything, right? You can email me, Cody at Cody Askins, okay? Feel free to do that, Cody at Cody Askins. I'd love to be of assistance. We're also gonna give you some links to some live calls, okay? We're gonna give you some links to some actual live calls. You can hear me on the phone, okay? I'll make sure we include that in the ebook, all right? I wanna jump to um, some different, different things that you can do, okay? For voicemail, text, or email, right? I'm going to give you some different ideas really quick. So when I leave a voicemail, I could use the normal script voicemail, 
I'm right. Hey, Betty, I'm getting back to you. It's Cody. You request the information. I'm just here to give it to you. Now I'll, I'll be out in your area. Hey, call me back as soon as you can, right? I could use a normal script and leave a voicemail, make it concise, make it simple. Or I could say, hey, Betty, getting back to you about your request for the, for the new information. Hey, I've got some great news. Okay, I want to give that to you. Call me back as soon as you possibly can and leave the number phone, phone number twice. Okay, that's a good news. That gets a lot of calls. That's phenomenal. Okay, it could also be the uh, quick question. Okay, hey, Miss, Miss Betty. Hey, I got your request. I just have one really quick question. Call me back as soon as you possibly can. Leave the phone number twice. Okay, that's a quick question. Okay, the last one is, hey, if you can't get a hold of them and you've called you know, a bunch of times and you want a fourth variation, Right? If, if, if you're selling, it, it could be one of these two, okay? If you're selling over the phone, hey, no worries. I know you haven't heard back from you. We went, we went ahead and processed your information, no big deal. If you, have, if you have any questions about what we processed, you can call us, here's our number, right? That's processing it. That's good for phone sales. Or, hey, Ms. Betty, I haven't, we haven't heard from you. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna deliver it and, and, and drop it off. I'll be out in your area in the next couple days and I'll see you then. If, if you don't want me to do that, call me. Okay, that's the other option, right? That's face-to-face -face option, that's for delivering. Those are four variations of voicemail, text, and email. I've given you a ton of information today, okay? So, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. If you have questions, okay? If you have questions and you want to talk in any way, and you think, dude, this guy gets it, and he can help me, phenomenal. Email me, Cody at CodyAskins.com. If you want access to the free ebook that we just talked about, here's what we're gonna do. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. For the first, for the first 100, you will get access to this for free, okay? I'm not sure how many are on right now, but the first 100 will get access to this for free. You can go to CodyAskins.com. Even if you think you don't need it, you will know an agent that needs it, so go grab it anyway, and it's actually free, okay? CodyAskins.com forward slash ebook. Okay, CodyAskins.com forward slash ebook. Make sure you do that and go there, okay? Huge thanks to all of you for watching. If you want to follow me on Instagram at Cody.Askins, I love helping agents. I'm here to help. I want to see you succeed. You have the ability to do something big in the world and I want you to do it, okay? Start to think bigger. Let's get after it. Let's go make some money. I believe right now is the best opportunity to succeed in the insurance sales space that I've ever actually seen. Okay, let's go succeed. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see it at an eight percent nation conference in the near future. Okay, so let me know if I can help. Have a great rest of your day. Great rest of 2020. And enjoy the virtual summit. Hey, if you love this video and you want to learn how to attract more customers immediately, all right. The next video is right here. It's for you. Click on there. And I'll see you over there. In the insurance industry, if people can reach out to you to do business with you, it's a lay down sell. Yeah, I think if you really understand the concept, the, the concept of being famous, right? I live outside of.